Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Break and welcome to my pickups for September 2024. And I've got some great things to show you today, mostly from the Milton Keynes gaming market, which was on last weekend. It was actually very different to most of the other gaming markets that I'm used to. This one was actually right in the middle of the shopping center, which was very strange. The whole place was open. It was just in the middle of the shopping center. There was big bright windows and the sun was beaming down. And I spoke to some of the people that were working there and they said, this just feels wrong. We should be in a dingy little hotel room somewhere. This is too nice. I don't like it. It was very nice though, it was very spacious, they had a great spot for it I think. It was quite funny seeing all of the regular shoppers walking past and just getting really really confused. And there was a massive queue before we all went in in the morning and there was loads of people walking past there just like looking around thinking what's going on here, what are all these nerds doing here. Anyway I got in and I had a fantastic time at the show and I bought a lot. Probably the most that I've picked up at one of these shows this entire year and I'll definitely be going back there next year. So. Let's start off here with two games for the Sega Dreamcast. And the first one is a game called Zombie Revenge. This one, I was actually speaking to someone at the stall and telling him that I wanted to get some more Dreamcast games, and he actually recommended this one to me. I had no idea what it was like, but I've played it for a little bit, for like maybe half an hour, and I definitely have to say that it is a great arcade style beat em up slash action game. It's really fun, I imagine it's even more fun in two player. The controls took a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, you can punch the zombies, you can shoot the zombies, you get loads of different power-ups for your weapons. It just seems like a really fun game, and it definitely has that Sega arcade feeling to it. It really does feel like the perfect Dreamcast game. So, thank you, whoever you were, for the fantastic recommendation. So, definitely check out Zombie Revenge if you want a good action arcade game for the Dreamcast. And another game for the Dreamcast, this one I'd actually had on my list for a long time already, and I was very happy to find it for a really good price, and in really good condition as well. This is a game called Silver, which is a top-down RPG story-driven game with some really nice pre-rendered backgrounds. It runs very smoothly. I was very impressed with what I've played so far. It has great voice acting, a really interesting story, and a very unusual fighting mechanic where you have to hold down the trigger and then press a button and a direction and you'll do a different set of sword moves. That definitely took some getting used to, but I can definitely see myself enjoying this if I do go back and properly play it some more in the future. So very happy to add this one to my Dreamcast collection. It's one that I've been curious about for a long time. Next up is a bunch of games for the 3DO and Ed, if you're watching, I have put it to more good use and I picked up four games for the system, including what many people say is the best game for the system, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. This was quite expensive, but because I bought the other four at the same time, they gave me a good discount on this one. And I have played it, and I have to say it's an incredible version of Street Fighter. It runs really well, it's fully PAL optimized, and yeah, it just seems fantastic. The other games that I picked up, Theme Park, which seems like a perfect PC conversion. In fact, I was so happy when I booted this up and I saw that it had the FMV cutscene that I loved so much as a kid when we played on our original Windows 95 version. So to see that again and to hear the sounds and the introduction music and stuff was such a nice nostalgic throwback to me. And the game seems to play fantastic as well. I really, really love the original theme park and this honestly seems like one of the best versions. Now, here's an interesting game. This one's called Pode or Pood or Poed. I have no idea, but it seems like a really interesting first person shooter slash exploration game. It kind of feels most similar to something like Quake. It's a little bit more intricate than something like Doom. There's a bit more verticality to the movement and the levels kind of seem a little bit more maze-like. The graphics seem really nice. You also can hold L and R to strafe left and right as well, which is a nice addition. And I haven't managed to get very far in this either because I tried to play it and I could not find out where to go. But apparently if you stick with it, this is actually a really good first person shooter. And I believe it also came out on the PS1 and possibly the Sega Saturn as well. So I don't know how the 3DO compares to them, but from what I played, it seems like a very competent game. And it just goes to show that the 3DO was quite a powerful system for the time. And one more game for the 3DO and a game that I've been fairly interested in checking out for quite a while now because one of my favourite games for the Game Boy Advance is David Beckham Adventure on Soccer Island. And I always thought that this game, Soccer Kid, was where they got the inspiration from for that game. But 
after playing this game, it's nothing like that at all. This game is awful from what I've played so far. The controls are just so frustrating and it's really difficult to get anywhere. And if you lose the ball in one of the spike traps or if it falls down a pit, you just can't get it back. You just then have to play the level with no means of attack whatsoever. So I do not understand the appeal of this game. If anyone's played Soccer Kid before, let me know what am I not getting from this. I tried and tried and I really could not get into it at all. Very disappointed. I was really hoping that this would be a really cool 2D platformer with a cool football slash soccer mechanic, but I was sorely disappointed. Now moving on from the 3DO to the Nintendo 64, another system from the same era. This one is World Driver Championship. And this one I only found out about fairly recently, thanks to someone on Twitter, I believe. And they were doing um, a thread of the best retro racing games, and this one was on the list. And it looks amazing, I have to give it credit where credit's due. The graphics in this game are fantastic. And it also includes a high resolution mode. And there's been people online that are saying that the high resolution mode could easily pass as an early PlayStation 2 game, it looks that good. And the gameplay actually holds up surprisingly well too. And apparently at the time everyone thought it was great as well because there's some review scores here at the bottom of the box. 95% from N64 Pro, 93% from Total 64, and 91 from N64 Magazine. And I can see why it got those scores. This is definitely something that I want to sit down and play more of, but I need to get one of the controller packs for the N64 in order to actually save the game. But from what I've played so far, very, very impressed, and this is easily going into my top N64 games list. Let me know down in the comments below whether you've ever played this game before, World Driver Championship. Another racing game here, and I haven't quite had a chance to try this one out just yet. I attempted to the other day, but things got in the way, so I can't really tell you whether the game's any good, but I know that this is a really interesting release for the Wii U. The game is called Fast Racing Neo, and the reason I'm interested to get this is that this was originally an eShop exclusive, but then I guess when the Wii U was struggling, they needed to get a few more games out onto the shelf. So they repackaged some of the eShop games into this Nintendo eShop Select line here and actually released them physically. And the graphics look incredible. And I think at the time, this was the closest that people got to a true follow-up to the F-Zero series. And I played it a little bit on the Switch, the fast racing, whatever that one was. Never played the Wii U original though. So I'm very curious to try this out and see how it holds up. Next is a system that I don't actually collect for very often, but I've been thinking about getting more into it now that the analog pocket has the adapters out. It's just so much more easier to play the games. That is the Sega Game Gear, and I picked up two games here. For the Game Gear, we have Devilish and we have Dragon Crystal. So let's start with Devilish, and I have played both of these a little bit. So Devilish is a very interesting game. I thought from the pictures on the back of the box that it was going to be something more similar to Pinball, but it actually turns out it's more like a breakout style game where you have two paddles and you can arrange them in various different arrangements and you can actually move them around the screen as well and the level's not fixed. You're actually moving through these different stages in different directions even and there's even boss fights. I was very, very impressed and yeah, it's one of the most interesting Sega games that I've played and I had no idea what it was. I literally just picked it up because it was complete in box and it was fairly cheap and I thought I want some more Game Gear games let's give it a try and it turns out to be a fantastic game so very happy to find out about that one and the other game is Dragon Crystal and I did already know what this game was I actually own it for the Sega Master System already and it's interesting to see how they squeezed it down onto the Game Gear they basically just reduced the field of view in every perceivable angle so it's nowhere near as good as the Master System version, but I guess at the time, if you wanted a portable version of a really great game, then this is a great version. And the game itself is just so good. I really enjoy it on the Master System, and I really enjoyed it here too. It's basically a roguelike dungeon crawler with kind of the map building out as you move around, but the walls of the map, depending on what floor you're on, are completely different sprites, and it looks really, really interesting. The gameplay is very simple. Obviously, it's your basic thing where you go around, just bump into enemies to attack them, find various weapons and armor, and equip them, and try and get a bit further each time. It's just a very, very simple game, but it works incredibly well, so definitely recommend both of these games. And also, please let me know down in the comments below what other Game Gear games you think I should try and track down in the future, because I do want to find out more about that system. I feel like it kind of passed me by because the Game Boy was just my thing back then, so yeah, let me know what Game Gear games you recommend. Now here's a really cool set of pickups. Two of these I got from the market and two of these I got a few weeks earlier from CEX, which I never talked about on the channel. So I'm just going to show them all here because this is just so cool to have. We have Mega Man Battle Network 6, 
Mega Man Battle Network 2, I don't know what order these are coming out in, Mega Man Battle Network 3, and Mega Man Battle Network 1. Add to that the other games that I've got, and the only one I've got left to get now is Mega Man Battle Network 5 Complete in Box. So I'm just so happy to actually add all of these Complete in Box to my collection. I love the Mega Man Battle Network series. I played 3, 4, and 5 on the DS. Never played the first two before, so I've actually started now on the analog pocket playing through the first Mega Man Battle Network. And I can kind of see why it gets some criticism because it does seem very drawn out. Like there's a bit that I got stuck in basically or just got bored of where you're halfway through doing a level and you have to come out the level and go back to the school and count the number of doors in the entire school in order to open a door to go back and help Mega Man progress. I thought that was just a complete waste of time and apparently the game's filmed with things like that and just random mazes that are really hard to navigate. But by the time Mega Man Battle Network 2 and 3 came around, they really perfected the formula. I had this one back in school, but I never had it complete in box, so I'm very happy to have that. And Mega Man Battle Network 6, I've never even seen this one before, so really happy to get this one. And I picked this one up from my favourite stall at the show, which is the one that I'm showing over the footage right now. It's just such a great stall, everything's in immaculate condition. And the guy who set the stall up watches these videos as well, and we had some great conversations throughout the day. So thank you so much, and thank you for selling me your game. I will see you again at London in a few months' time. So. This is something really cool. Not a game, but a magazine. This one's from when Donkey Kong Country 3 came out and there's a massive review in here. And I put the uh, images on Blue Sky and tagged one of my favorite creators, DK Vine, and they were just laughing at it because in this magazine, if we go, and look how long this review is, by the way, it just goes on and on and on. At the end, they gave it an overall score of 98%, which is apparently the best score that this magazine ever gave any game, and they gave it to the worst game in the trilogy, so I don't know how to explain that, but it's great to have this, and just flicking through these old magazines, I really miss when they were just so bright and colourful, they didn't care about design language or anything, like it's just insane, the whole thing is just so brilliant and so 90s and I absolutely love it, so yeah really huge fan of retro gaming magazines and going from magazines to books here's something very exciting not from the show but these are two things that i picked up on amazon recently and i've been waiting a long time for these to get released in english these are volume three and four of an ongoing series called the history of nintendo i also have volume one here and for the longest time i thought these would only ever be available in french especially the game boy one i am so happy to finally have this and apparently it goes into loads of detail about the history of the system and how it was made and all of the history behind the development to begin with and all of the trials and tribulations that they went through as a company to get it out the door. Such a fascinating read, but I'm reading through this one first and then I'll get to that. And at some point in the future, I want to do a history of Game Boy video. So this book will be a vital resource for that video as well. So incredibly happy that these are finally officially released in English. I'll put an affiliate link in the description if you want to go and get them from Amazon. And now all I need is the second book in the series, which is just impossible to find. So if anyone can find the Game & Watch one, please let me know and I will buy it instantly. I tried to buy it a few times but whenever i've tried in the past they just say it's not available so hopefully one day i can find that and complete my florent gorgeous collection of nintendo history books now for something very exciting that i've actually been waiting for a while to turn up even though i didn't order it that long ago it is a new analog pocket i actually got this lime green one which was from the new colors that they released recently and the reason i chose this one is because the game boy color that i had as a kid was this exact color i'll see whether i can find a photo and put it up over there next to this one child me would be so happy that i've got this and my original analog pocket i did get one on day one i had one of the early pre-orders but it has a bunch of issues which this one actually addressed so for one thing, the L and R buttons on this one don't work properly. The buttons on the side are really hard to press because they're actually flat against the system. Whereas now, and I'll cover this in more detail I think, they're actually raised out so they're a lot easier to press down. I don't know whether you can see on the camera compared to the original, but trust me, it's a lot nicer. The D-pad feels nicer as well, I was having a few issues with the D-pad on this one. And uh, yeah, the triggers are the main thing. And the colour just looks amazing. So really happy to have this. This will be replacing this one. I don't know what to do with this one just yet. Maybe I'll sell it. Maybe I'll keep it as part of the collection. 
But whenever I play Game Boy games from now on, and I've got the dock over there, they'll all be played on this, so very happy to have this. So before we end this episode, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone that's commented on my Game Dev Journey episode that I uploaded last week. I'll link to it up here so you can go and check it out. It's been amazing reading all the comments on there, and it's honestly one of my favourite videos that I've ever made. So please go ahead and watch that one next, and I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye.